Hiya, Kylie here, incoming freshman at MIT, and I'm here at the Prine Bridge in Twin Falls, Idaho to talk to you about five things high school students that are interested in STEM can do to up their chances of getting into the top U.S. universities. Let's get started. Number one is to find your passion early. Unlike what some people might say, colleges don't want a jack of all trades who is sort of good at everything but not really good at one specific thing. You want to be good at that one specific thing. So find what you're passionate about early so that you can invest all of your time and energy into it and become the best you can be at that one thing. For me, that was astronomy. And so throughout my high school years, I focused all of my attention on just astronomy. And that's part of what got me into MIT. Number two is to learn how to code. Every good uh, STEM student knows how to code. And so if you start sooner or later, you're getting a heads up. I started in high school, but I know some of my friends who are into STEM started in middle school. So the earlier you start, the better. The language I would probably recommend is Python. Python's very versatile and you can use it for a lot of things. So if you learn how to code in Python, it'll provide a good basis into learning other languages like C or C Sharp, MATLAB, um, I don't know all those other languages that scientific students use. So get a heads up and programming will also offer you a lot of good job opportunities in the future too. So the earlier you start, the better. Another thing you should look into, number three, is research. So if you're really into STEM, a lot of the opportunities out there are in scientific research, doing innovative new things. And there are two routes that you can go, two routes. So the first one is that if there's some sort of opportunity already near you. So you can contact a professor, um, see what they're doing, um, try and look around you to see if there are any internships that deal with scientific research, that kind of thing. Um, but if there aren't any of those kinds of already set opportunities near you, then you have to create your own. So that's what I did. I came from a really small town where there was basically no scientific research. So I went to um, the observatory and I created some of my own research there. And so that's what you can kind of do to subset for that. And that actually will help in your college essays because you can write about how you were proactive and create opportunities for yourself, that kind of thing. They really dig that. So um, those are the two things that you can do. And that was number three. Number four are summer programs. So in one of my previous videos, I talked about how it's very important to do things during the summer so that they know that you can fill your free time with productive things. So summer programs are very useful for high school students because they allow you to learn um, specific sciences that maybe aren't taught in class, that kind of thing. So for one of my summers, I actually went to a summer program at a university somewhere um, that taught astrophysics. Um, that wasn't taught at my high school. So that was an example of that, but there are also like research um, summer programs like RSI, the Research Science Institute, there's one done by Siemens, and there are um, tons of different uh, summer institutes, um, summer programs for STEM students. So I would look into them uh, and see which one would fit you best. There are even summer programs that you don't even have to pay anything for. Like the Research Science Institute that I mentioned earlier, you don't have to pay for anything if you get in. But of course, the ones that you don't have to pay anything are more competitive. So be wary of that. And the application process for those is actually very similar to college in that you should focus on academics as a baseline and then add in all of your other stuff as, to make yourself stand out, that kind of thing. So um, if you want more uh, summer internship, summer program information, then I will put a link in the description. The fifth and final one is International Olympiads. So Science Olympiads, International Olympiads, they're basically the same. So there are different Olympiads for all the different sciences. So there's like the physics one, bio biology, chemistry, math, um, all computer science, all kinds of different sciences. So I would look into those if you're really into scientific academic tests because they are very, very specific tests and they're very difficult. So there are different levels of them. So you'll often start at like a state level or like a qualifying test. The math one has like three or four different qualifying levels. So make sure you know um, where to start for those. And then once you get past the qualifying test, then you can go to like the next level maybe national and oftentimes there's like a camp that you qualify for and you go to this camp and you prepare for like the international test with like a team of people who are into it. Um, if you want more information about that, I'll also link that in the description below. Um, yeah, international Olympiads are a big thing in STEM and if you can get all the way to the international level, you're definitely set. 
And those are five things that a high school STEM student should do to try and increase their chances to getting into top US universities. I'll see you next time. Bye.